Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Extra Point. As you can see, we're a, a man down this week. Yeah. Um, they should be rolling in here in just a second, but we had to get going. Uh, so, Zach, how are you doing? Doing all right, Joe. How about you? I'm doing all right. I'm ready for a good week of football. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some of last week's football. Uh, let's go over the games real quick. Coffee County uh, wins. Yeah, that's um, surprising a little bit. Yeah. So I think we all kind of thought Lebanon might be able to win that one. So Lebanon. Lebanon. I, <laughs> not from Tennessee, so I got don't have the accent quite yet. So. Yeah. Tullahoma wins 29-22. We'll talk about that one in a minute. Uh, Franklin County loses in a – I mean, that was a, a barn burner game. Uh, 52-49. North County was on bye. Huntland lost. Lincoln County lost. Uh, and Grundy County – um, one and mm -hmm. Warren County won over Fayetteville. Shelbyville lost. Uh, let's talk about this week's games, then we'll talk about what happened last week. This week, River, Riverdale at Coffee County, <laughs> Tallahoma yeah. on a bye, Franklin County on a bye, and Huntland at Moore County, which had a big, big game. Um, mm -hmm. Other games this week White County at Lincoln County, Grundy County at Upperman, Columbia at Shelbyville. And that Columbia at Shelbyville is going to have big implications. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. uh, and Fayetteville is on a bye. Let's tell me about that Franklin County loss. A uh, heartbreaker of a loss for those guys. You know, one of those things that a young program has to go through. It's taking those steps, you know, those hard learned lessons where you really have to dig deep. They led by three touchdowns at one point. Um, both teams have 500 yards apiece of offense. Uh, a little like Franklin County, about 470 something with uh, rushing. Uh, Jerry Johnson had five touchdowns. So it was a you know, offensively, it was a great night for those guys. It was just some conservative play calling there at the end. Really couldn't tie things up. Um, Columbia onside kicks, recovers, scores. Kind of took the wind out of their sails, and they couldn't uh, make up the lost time there at the end. Clock runs out, and that's the game. Great game to watch, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great game to watch. Great game for this young team to really kind of have under their belts now. Again, you hate to see them have that loss, but I think they learned a lot of those hard lessons you're supposed to learn as a, a young program. Yeah, we were talking. Great one to watch on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. We were uh, talking briefly about Coffee County getting that win, so at least Coffee County's now got two wins on the season. Yeah, now they got two wins, and we have to actually make a clarification, too, because we've been under, me and you have been under this assumption that Coffee County's automatically in the playoffs. No, they did away with that. This oh, okay. Year, because we got corrected by one of our viewers. Thanks, Joe. Barstead. Um, yeah, I, I had totally missed that since I don't cover 6A that I forgot that they had, had done away with that automatic playoff berth. But yeah, that is correct. They do not, they are not automatically guaranteed to make the playoffs. Okay, well then we uh, we appreciate the clarification and uh, we will uh, note that. Let's talk to Tullahoma win. They're back to 4-4 four four now in the season, right? They are back to 4-4 four and, four and finally notched their first ever region 4-4A four four win. Uh, so that was a huge step for Tullahoma, especially beating uh, Morris County, who they had who they had previously lost to five straight years. So it was a good monkey to get off from Coach Olive's back, and uh, just another game where they played terror. They played. They didn't play up to par in the first half, where they just came out slow and came up beating themselves. First drive, it wasn't like they were having trouble moving the ball. The first drive of the game, they moved it down toward Lawrence County's two-yard line, but a bat snap over the running back's head. He was taking a direct snap, backs you up to the 24-yard line, and you end up missing a field goal. And the next thing you know, Lawrence County takes a 14-0 lead and a 22-7 lead at halftime. So, But thankfully, they played well in the second half, like they've done all season for the most part, and were able to notch that comfort behind. <laughs> they got to piece two halves together. They, they're, they're digging themselves a hole every game. It seems like it. Seems like it. Uh, well, let's talk play quick, and then we'll move on because we've got to make this one a little quicker today, guys. Um, you know, and the Coffee County thing kind of changed it up. But I've got it like this. I was looking up. Tullahoma looks like they're going to need a lot of help to maybe make the playoffs. There's still an outside chance that they could make it to the playoffs. It's gonna, they're going to have to win both ball games uh, toward – the last two ball games of the season, which is, are going to be pretty tough. You got to go down to Giles County uh, next Friday, and then you've got to host Maplewood the following Friday to, uh, to cap off the season. So it's not impossible, but improbable at this point. Yeah, yeah that, well, that's kind of the way I was looking at. Um, Lincoln County, I think, is probably out. Franklin County needs a lot of help, is yeah. what it looked like to me. Well, they're going to play two big rival games um, after this bye week, and that well, they, need uh, those wins. they do. Them. They have to have both those wins, and so um, I think 
with Lincoln County. Uh, pro, you know, they, I, you know, they they can win both games. Question is, is they gonna are they gonna be able to? Those are big games, and both those teams always play them hard each year. So, I, you know, it's possible. It's right. possible. I've got figured that Huntland is out. Yeah, yeah. I'd say uh, that's uh, fair assumption. Yeah, Grundy County, I think, needs some help. Um, not quite as much as maybe a couple of the other teams if they were once again to win out themselves. Um, because the teams that they're that are ahead of them they're playing. Yeah. So, you know, that's always um on the bubble um will be Fayetteville. Uh is on the bubble, but I'd say with a win they're gonna be in. Uh Moore County would be about the same with a win, another win, I'd say they're probably gonna be in. Um Shelbyville's gotta win this Friday. That's the way I look at that one. Yeah. Um, basically, if Shelbyville beats Columbia, then they take that third spot. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what Columbia's sitting in. Yeah. I know we don't cover uh, Shelbyville all that much, but how? I don't know if you, if you guys read at all about their game by Summit this past week. Did, did you read about that? I, I saw the score, but it was a good game. Well, get Grayson Trammell, the quarterback over there, set the new state record for passing yardage in a game. So, wow. unfortunately, the Golden Eagles lost that game to Summit, but it was a shootout. And, but he's now the record holder for the most yards in the game. Yeah, it Summit's was a, it a great was a very, team, so to be able to say that is uh, Yeah, it was kudos. a very close game, too, um, um, if you saw the score. Um, all right, well, let's move on. Uh, since we do have a couple of buys going on this week, we'll have a lot more to talk about next week, I'm sure, mm -hmm. when it comes to high school football. Um, let's talk about last week's picks. I went four and two, Zach three and three. These picks are at the college level. Right? Yes, the college level. And Callie, you went five and one. I wrote an OMG underneath that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, uh, I'm 23 and 14 in the lead. Zach, you're 2017. Callie made a big step to get, get back at Zach at 19 and 18 on the season. Yeah. Um, talk about upsets. Uh, since Cali went five and one, oh, they're folks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk. Michigan lost. Uh, Oklahoma lost. The Gators lost. Some might say Louisville lost. Maybe it was an upset. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of upsets last week. Uh, we'll let Zach talk about that Oklahoma game since I'm sure he loved that. <laughs> yeah, that was an absolute terrible one. I think this is just one of those things where Oklahoma got caught looking a week ahead. You know. I, Taking Iowa State for granted a little bit, and, and then you got to go. You got beat by the linebacker quarterback. Can I you know read that story. Yeah, that was pretty. Yeah, I watched that <laughs> most of the second half. That was a uh, kudos to that kid for playing both sides of the ball. But it was a frustrating day for Oklahoma. And like I said, I think they just may have got caught looking a weekend because that's the big red rivalry shootout every year against Texas is, is this week. So. I think that kind of hindered Oklahoma a little bit. So. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Michigan gets upset by Michigan State. A lot of people probably didn't see that one coming, but you know it's an in-house rivalry. So yeah, I mean, and their offense is still it's been slow to get started this year. Acorn has had a you know a, a difficult year, and um, you know some people kind of question here. You know, did Harbaugh kind of kind of give him too much hype? You know, there's still a lot of football left to be played. So, but like I said, that's a huge rivalry game. They weren't coming in there to lose yeah. and if we'll, they could help it. We'll just mention one more because I really just like saying the Gators lost. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about a bad it. bad hole, the bad hole. Well, you know, I think their luck just ran out. You know, you can only you can only kill so many chickens and all that good stuff, and it just. You know, they've been they've missed kicks all year long, and offensively, they're still not with it. Um, and I just think it was just they finally ran out of luck. Well, always good to see him lose, though. And uh, me and you took LSU last week. Yeah, well, I mean, Orgeron had to make a statement, and he did. I mean, he still got a lot of work to do. But he, somebody's gonna have to make a statement. Oh goodness, we don't. Have um, to let's get down just a little bit. Cause we gotta go in a hurry. Uh, who can beat Alabama? Nobody. And Clemson's the only team. Yeah. 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 Auburn, I think, is, has the defense ability to hold, contain Alabama, but I just don't think they have enough offense output to yeah. to beat Alabama. Are, are we boring you? No. It's, just, <laughs> it's called being <it>. Never mind. <laughs> um, I, I would kind of agree. Alabama looks really good. And this actually segues into what this next thing I've written down here. Um, does it seem like the number six through maybe the number 44, maybe I'm stretching a little bit, in the polls can win on any given – day this year you know it seems like there's more 
I'd say anywhere Equal between ground. number three and onward is, is kind of, yeah. uh, I think, the top two top teams. To 30 at least. Yeah, or at least can win at any point. And, and it's, I really don't know how you rank those those number three through whatever teams you want to go with, but <laughs> I think the two the top two teams are pretty between, evident. Who there's there's a big difference between 20 and 30. Right? No. Yeah. So at this point, you know. <laughs> so. Well, we talked about it yesterday with Coach Olive, you know, about these teams that – you know, these, even these smaller programs, there's really not a bad program anymore. You know, they're, these smaller teams are able to recruit really good players and come in and upset these bigger schools, whereas, you know, we, used to, we call them the Mother Mary blonde, uh, School of the Blonde yeah. and all, but these smaller programs, you know, are, are doing their own thing too. Well, let's get into this week's picks uh, so we can speed this up. Um, number 24, Texas Tech at West Virginia. What are you thinking, Callie? Oh, um, Texas Tech. Zach? I'm going to go with West Virginia on this one. I think, I don't know if you guys read the news about that uh, shooter at the University yeah. of Texas at, at Texas Tech, and I think that's going to become a distraction for Texas Tech this weekend, uh, unfortunately for them. So I, I, I like West Virginia. I, I, I don't one. disagree with that. I just kind of think Texas Tech has a little more offense than West Virginia does, and I'm going to take Texas Tech. Um, this might be a dumb underdog pick. Auburn at LSU. One Death Valley. What do you think, Zach? Uh, Auburn. I think you you maybe mentioned Auburn earlier. So I think Auburn has a pretty stout defense. So I think. Yeah, I'm with him on that one. Auburn. I think Auburn um, gets this win um, as well because I just don't think Florida is Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vandy at Ole Miss. I think this is the one I'm a little troubled about. Other than it being at Ole Miss, I don't know. Yeah. Wendy, who I thought looked pretty good. It depends on what team show up. It depends on what, but you're also at Ole Miss, which is mm -hmm. in their favor. I'm going to say Ole Miss in this one. Yeah, I think I'm going Ole Miss as well with this one. See, I'm going to go Vanderbilt on this one. I think Ole Miss just still has those program issues with Hugh Freeze leaving and still looking for consistency. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't disagree with that. Um, let's talk. Texas and M at Florida. Texas and M actually gave Alabama free. Yeah, they game. did. Probably they the, the de most decent game of the year yeah, so thus far. Yeah, this is the one that I was torn on the most out of all these picks. I guess I'm going to go Texas A&M on this one. I'm not really confident in that pick, but I, yeah, I just think go ahead for the K. That, so. You know I ain't picking Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go with Texas A&M just because I just don't think Florida is Florida. I mean. I really don't. I think no. they've got a lot of lucky in a couple of their games. They probably should have lost a couple of those games. Aren't you guys looking forward to seeing those new awesome Florida Oh, Lordy, my, bless yeah, their hearts. Saturday. Can't wait. It's sad that their uniforms have come to okay. that. Okay, Utah at USC. USC sitting at number 13. Now, I think this is a good underdog pick right here. I Utah's think this, a good team. I think this is a good team, <laughs> but I still like USC. In yeah, this I do too. Of course, every time I picked USC, they've lost, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this time. I'm going to take Utah because they just got knocked out of the top 25. And um, I think they, they lost last week. They got something to prove this week. So, number six, TCU at Kansas State, Zach. Uh, TCU, I like what I've seen some from uh, TCU this year, uh, both sides of the ball. I um, agree. Yeah. Uh, it was a college game day pick yes, uh, last week as well, so I'm going to stick with the TCU. Yep. Um, and the way their uh, schedule works. Um, they could be um, someone there at the end. Um, all right, I think well, we got one more. Um, speaking of guys that had to have that win, like you said, or Orgeron, um, South Carolina at UT. Um, I, not knowing how South Carolina, they put up like 40 something points last week. And now UT's deciding they're going to make a, a, a quarterback, quarterback change. change. Yeah. I think this could be the straw that breaks Tim's back. Well, I, I agree with you on that. And what Sean said yesterday, it's going to take everything that Tennessee's got to beat uh, uh, South Carolina. Um, if you remember several years back, the loss to South Carolina is what got rid of Johnny Major. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one that put the moving van in front of his yeah, house. So. Um, I, I got to go with South Carolina on this one. I just don't know if Tennessee can muster enough offense. Uh, to to score the points needed to win the game. Hopefully the bye week helps. Yeah, 
helps them out to get some of their stuff fixed. Yeah, look, we've shown his record after bye weeks. Yeah. Uh, this is one that I had to flip a coin on and think about over and over again. I'm going UT on this one. I think that there's a slight possibility of having that bye week, which this is one of the best bye weeks they've ever had, according to Butch over there. So uh, I'll go with uh, <laughs> He's not going to say the worst. The champions of <laughs> The champions of the bye week. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, my uh, silly underdog pick this week, um, and I don't really think it's silly. I'm taking Georgia Tech to beat Miami, and I wrote some down here for you guys. I don't know if you really thought about it. Um, you know, you got uh, LSU, of course. Auburn's at LSU. TCU's at Kansas State. Um, Oklahoma versus Texas. That's probably, probably a good underdog pick. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know. I don't really have an underdog pick at this point. I guess Texas is probably the one that I would go with that at the most, but I really don't even think Texas right. will win that game. I think it's going to be tough to win it with Oklahoma having a loss. Um, yeah. Have you looked at any underdogs for the week? Yeah, well, no, I'm going to go with my, my own home team, UT over South Carolina, and the nail biter. I don't know if I can say that's an underdog. I. I just they they they've got to prove some stuff to me this week. All right, real quick, let's get this finished up because I'm already late for a meeting. I'm gonna get yelled at. Uh, the Titans lose again, two, and they're now two and three. Mm -hmm. I think it's not looking good for them now. Um, you don't know what the Mariota injury is going to do. That's the biggest thing right now. We're not being told a whole lot. Um, our preseason predictions, Callie, where you said they were going to go nine and seven, Zach, you said eleven and five, and I said nine and seven. Uh, what are you thinking now? I'm thinking eight and eight now, so it, and but it all hinges on how Mariota is, is going to be healthy for the rest of the season. Yeah. If not, the Titans are going nowhere. We, it's, we saw that on well, Sunday against Miami. Castle couldn't do anything. It's Castle not, couldn't do anything. So. Now it was the worst. The worst in back calls. Yeah, obviously, but yeah, the fumble for back for a touchdown I thought it was a little bit ridiculous. I thought it's, uh, Castle's hand was clearly going forward on the Well, I mean, the fumble was 20 yards yeah, up. Well, exactly. yeah. <laughs> I just think that was a horrible call, but... And then no. what about the off... Or what about, I guess, was the offensive interference they called? On yeah, the yeah, there was some questionable calls in there, but so, can't blame the reps on the Kelly, what are you thinking there? Um, I mean, I think 97 is being very optimistic at the point yeah. that they already have three losses. Lord, y'all are the ones who are trying to get me to be so optimistic. Um, also, I'll go with Zach on the 8-8. Eight eight. It just all depends on if Mario yeah. gets healthy or not. There's, a lot, of, there's a lot of question marks. This yeah. offense is well, and the problem is right now, Jacksonville's looking much better. Houston's looking much better. Yeah. Um, Indianapolis has even won a game. They're looking a little better. The Titans aren't are the team that's not – their yeah. offensive line's not getting it done. Their mm -hmm. defense is doing okay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, number one, even if you get Mariota back, your offensive line is not letting you run the ball, which was one of our strong points mm -hmm. last year. That means Mariota is going to take off more. He's going to get hit more. He's going to be injured more. I think seven and nine, and they do not make the playoffs at all now. At all. Just toss them out. Seven wins, nine losses. If Mariota's out for the next game or two, that's definitely a possibility. Okay. So, well, thankfully, they got a coach to Indianapolis this week who's just as and injured yeah. and downtrodden as the Titans are at this point. So It is a Monday night game, so Monday watch the Monday, Monday night game. Um, Predators, of course, they lost their last couple. Their last, they lost their first two games of the season, but one of them. I, 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 I watched that game. I didn't yeah. see the very last moment, which I don't know why, what I was doing, but that was a great game. Yeah, it was they a battle game. back like they did. Well, they were up three to nothing. Mm -hmm. Then it was tied. Then they gave up five goals in a row. It was five to three. And then they were able to score and then put two in within the last two minutes to yeah. uh, win the game. So good luck, Predators, on the rest of your season. Um, once again, I got to get going, so we'll call it a day today. Um, you can always reach Zach at – Reach me on Twitter at Zach Birdsong. Or you can reach Callie at uh, – Also on Twitter um, at NewsGal27. Also, just real quick, we talked to Coach All yesterday. We weren't able to go Facebook Live because of Facebook issues, though that is on Telehoma News Sports page, also Telehoma News yes, sure. uh, Facebook yeah. page. And the website. And the website. So check it out. Lots of good uh, information from all of about where the team has come – come it's going and all that good stuff so check it out if you get a second all right folks we appreciate you joining us um, let us know how we're doing anytime have a good day